Alright, how to perform the perfect push-up with correct form, no BS, let's just get straight into it. Push-ups you've probably seen your whole life, been like people doing them all around you, but 90% of the time they're probably doing them wrong. And so I'm going to show you what it is, like how you're actually meant to correctly do it with correct form and keeping yourself stable. I've made a bunch of... Uh, little mini clips showing push-up form like the correct push-up form from like several different angles and this should hopefully help to get an idea of um, the correct push-up form so I'm gonna just go through them all and give a voiceover trying to explain like what I'm doing correctly and also what you should not do alright so um, let's begin with hand placement so here we go where you should put your hands for the push up wait let me go back so let's say you're like kneeling down like this so you want your hands to be about shoulder width or maybe just outside shoulder width apart also you want to keep them like in line with your shoulder like they're like in the same uh, like perpendicular to the ground right and then it just kind of goes behind like this and then at the bottom position your hand should be around where your shoulder is so like when you're doing the pushing movement it should be around there you don't want it to be like you don't want your hand to be too far up or too far down okay with hand placement along with that you need to think about like hand orientation so you should you should have your hands like face like uh, pointing forward not like kind of in like turning inside or turning outside because that like kind of places like your shoulders in like a bit more risky position some some yeah so just kind of like yeah keep it forward now another thing that I didn't really talk about is just like with your hands you want your hands to be spread out as much as possible like this don't have them like that close because if you have them that close it kind of reduces like the surface area so it's a bit more difficult to perform so at the start I recommend doing that and then like a progression like if you want to make it harder it's like doing that and, or even doing like knuckle push-ups which like even, is an even shorter like surface area so like your entire body weight will be on that one part so that's what a lot of people do with like when they're doing like knuckle conditioning at the start for like classic push-ups you want your hand to be like like outstretched like as you can see here okay the next thing that you want to do that you want to know about is the feet placement of the feet so after you've arranged your hands like shoulder width apart you want your feet to be right next to each other and in the middle of your body now the next thing that we need to do when getting ready for a push up after we've got the hands and legs ready we need to push as far away from the ground as possible and that means you need to protract your shoulder blades so what this means is that if this is like your shoulder blades like neutral protracting them would mean pushing them forward kind of rounding your body and then retracting them is like pushing them back okay so at the very top of the push up which you need to get back to like every single rep you need to have your shoulders protracted so pushed away which is w what is happening right now like you can see they're, they're both over here and then <clears throat> on the way down what you need to do is you need to retract your shoulder blades okay and now I'll tell you the reason for this so the muscles involved in the push-up the main muscles are your chest and your triceps okay um, and there's also a bit of like front delt but I'm not too sure how that's involved exactly but it's, it's uh, less involved than the others but let's just focus on chest and triceps so first I'll just cover triceps quickly triceps are involved in like arm extension so just doing that right and so in the push up the way that it's used is that you push away from the ground so therefore you use your triceps right and then um, your chest what it does is it um, does it like brings your two hands together so imagine your hands are like out here what it does is it like brings them in so it does that that action of like moving your hands together so in the push-up 
what it would be doing is like this and then moving them together right now the the only way that you can actually activate your chest in the push-up is if you retract your shoulder blades that way that you can actually get like a stretch on them to be able to so then they could be able to like push back and and like pull your arm back if you understand me so that's why you need to retract your shoulder blades on the way down and then protract them on the way up to get like the full squeeze like at the very top of the rep just kind of squeeze your sh like uh like hands like into the ground to just get an extra squeeze in your chest that will help with like mind muscle connection yeah there should be a better video showing like the shoulder blade action so yeah here are the shoulder blades like fully protracted and then when you go down they retract and now like a good cue to understand like uh, how to reach out your shoulder blades is to imagine kind of pinching like a pencil behind your back between your two shoulder blades imagine there's like a pencil here and you need to like break it in half so, like just like you just squeeze your two shoulder blades together at the very bottom of the movement Okay, I think you've got an idea of how the shoulder blades function there. And now another term for the shoulder blades that I might use is the scapula. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I just watched like another video on like push-up form. And one thing I didn't really talk about uh, to do with like the shoulder blades. There's like kind of two other things. So we already talked about having it like protracted and then retracted. But there's also like having it like up and then down so what you want I think it's called like depressed I don't know what this is called like repressed but I don't even know but like you want to keep your shoulder blades like down right like depressed throughout the whole movement alright now the next thing that, he, that you need to do in the push up before like moving down like so the, so the first three steps so far are like hand placement feet placement and uh, protracting your shoulder blades the next thing they need to do is tighten and like brace your entire body so this includes your glutes so if we look here in this video here when I go up you can see my glutes are all tensed up because of all these creases so even the glutes are like engaged in the push-up and this uh, the reason why this is needed for good form is that it keeps your whole body in one uh one straight line and so your whole body moves as one unit not kind of separately now i'll show you what it would look like badly right here we go we've got a side angle here so yeah first find the shoulder width distance which is what i'm doing and then arrange your feet together in the back and then protract shoulder blades and squeeze glutes yeah do you see there how I squeeze my glutes look watch boom so yeah they're tightened and the other thing they need to tighten is your abs your core to keep your whole body as one and your whole body needs to descend as one unit throughout the push up watch this look at that it's like a whole straight line Okay, that's how, and uh, this is what you should not do. This is when your abs are not engaged. Look, so look, I've just, I'm already sagging here. I've got like a banana kind of thing going on. My glutes aren't engaged, and then it's just, it's not even a push up. I don't even know what this is. And then for at this point, I, I've actually seen this before. People literally just humping the ground, trying to impregnate the ground. It's so odd. Nah, yeah, yeah, you see me? No, nah. you need to go down as one whole unit when you're tensing your body you also got to tense your thigh muscles on top of your core and your glutes so yeah make sure you do tense because not tensing could actually lead to another injury because if you're not tensing then your body doesn't actually move as one unit like up and down instead like it will kind of probably move down maybe as one but then it'll kind of move up and then it will like straighten out which is not good. You want to kind of keep it at this, like um, in one, like as one unit, because that um, the other movement could lead to injury. 
another issue I see that kind of comes along with like tightening your glutes is people that don't like rotate their pelvis forwards so um, let me just show you an example of like kind of what it would look like badly wait one sec so like imagine like someone's like sticking their butt out as if they were like doing like a like a downward dog pose from like yoga so yeah hopefully in this image you can see how this guy's butt is kind of like sticking up and out but instead if he kind of like aligned it so that his body was straight by rotating his pelvis forward and tensing up everything then it would align to a straight line which is um, what I'm trying to tell you to do in this step so to better explain this like pelvic tilt thing that I'm on about I've like found like an animation so let's, let me just like look at it with you as to just explain like what you should do so yeah this is what people do wrong which is they they uh, tilt the pelvis towards the front like they anti-vert it I guess that would be the verb I don't know so yeah they they make their butt stick out so um, yeah uh, don't really worry about all that other stuff and but you can kind of understand like the movement but this is what you want to do tilt your pelvis towards the rear so to re retrovert your pelvis so that's what you should do in a push-up um, if you see that animation you should hopefully understand like um, what the movement is like look at this animation here so do you see how previously that butt was like stuck out in when it was anti-verted and now that's regular and then when it's retroverted it's like that so yeah that's what you should be trying to focus on when performing the push-up trying to like pit tilt your pelvis like inward kind of all right the next thing that we need to cover is like this arrow formation thing so just have a look at this video so if you can see here at the bottom of the push-up my body is kind of like in an arrow formation like this is like the, the like the main body of the arrow it's like the tip of the arrow and these are like the two wings off to the side and they're kind of like at 45 degrees as like you can see here so this is the kind of bottom position of the push-up they need to achieve after every single rep and also you can see here I squeeze my glutes, squeeze my shoulder blades together just before getting ready so look I just squeeze my shoulder blades together there you can see that just to activate my chest a bit more to be able to like stretch it out and then be able to like push out right and then also my glutes are tense and then you can't see it from this angle but my core would also be tensed and then bam and then you can see again my shoulder blades are uh, they retract at the bottom and then they protract at the top look at that and then again this arrow formation just gotta keep that in mind with like your arm part a uh, mistake that I see a lot being done with push-ups is that you flare your arms out too much and it kind of creates like a T shape which is not what you want you kind of want to keep your arm path kind of close to your body and I'm going to show you another video to do with that to get your this arrow kind of formation right now the reason that you don't want it to be to the side is because I think it will cause something called like shoulder impingement some sort of injury or something so you that's that's the reason why you don't want to do that and I don't think it's um, it, it won't activate your chest as much no, so I think the first thing I show is like what you should not do, so just keep that in mind. Now if you see here, my arms are kind of out to the side, like this is kind of uh, kind of angled out here, which is not what we want, and this kind of creates like a more T-shape kind of thing. You can't really see it from this angle as much, but there is like a T-shape more in the top. This is not what we want to do, like watch. Like it's not very efficient and it's probably going to cause injury so what you want to do yeah did you see just there how I kind of turn my elbows to point forward right look at that look how my arms turn all right that's now that's just don't don't turn your wrist just turn your kind of elbow itself not like your wrist okay you'll be able to do it when you're like on the ground there and what you want is your elbow to kind of point 
like the open part of your elbow to, to point forward that way your arm path will be more directed behind you watch so now it's a bit more closer to the body and look at that my wrist and my elbow are now perpendicular which is another thing that you want to be able to do not like how it was over here when it's out to the side but you want it to be wait where was it there perpendicular okay um now this is a bit more healthier and you'll be able to like you won't get injured as much with it yeah so you want to rotate your elbow kind of forward and then that way your arm part will go more behind you and this will help with not having the t-shape and it will also help your wrist and your elbow being more aligned together now another thing with the forearms you kind of want to keep I, I think I already talked about this kind of earlier but you want to keep your forearm like perpendicular to the ground throughout the whole movement you don't want it to kind of be waving about and all you just want it to stay like as straight as possible and as stable and the only like moving bit is kind of like your tricep now the last thing that you want to do that I want to clarify is like the depth how low you should go for every single push up and so what you want to do is you want to get this sort of depth where your chest just briefly touches the ground like from this angle you can see my even my chin just kind of touches the ground a bit as well but um, don't let like your rest of your body kind of sag and like just like give out at the bottom. You want to keep all of that tense throughout the whole movement. So yeah, and you want your body to move as one unit. So yeah, it touches, just briefly touches the bottom. Maybe just pause for a second, and then and then head back up. And now after every rep, at the very top of the rep. You want to get to the very very top you don't want to just do like a half fret and like stop here and then go back down no that's that doesn't count you have to go to the very top of the movement like I'm doing otherwise you won't get like maximum gains that you can from the push-up you want to be able to extend throughout the whole movement <laughs> all right I think I covered most things to do with form I just have one bonus clip here <laughs> Falling camera. It's like a cinematic video. Watch this. I had like such a weird setup for this. I had to put like a table and then a chair and then put like this tripod on top of that with this camera. It was such an odd setup. I had to like get in here. I wanted to show like the arrow formation a bit clearer, but then uh, it didn't really work out. Like I hit that. Yeah, that was a bit unfortunate. Anyway, that should have kind of clarified most things to do with form. I'll, I'll maybe add in like another little clip after if there's something that I missed. So yeah, okay, a couple more things I didn't talk about. I'm realizing I didn't talk about a lot of stuff, but um, okay, with your head and neck position, you don't want to kind of like push your neck forward because remember how I said you want your like the depth for the push up where your nose kind of briefly touches the ground oh wait maybe I forgot about that but anyway yeah that's that's what you want to do but you don't like want to try and achieve this by pushing your neck out further so that your nose is closer to the ground you want to kind of keep your uh, neck back your chin like in so that it's like back here not like out in front all right so you kind of want to keep your whole body as in one straight line not like one forward so then it'll be like that you want it to be like straight now another thing that I didn't really discuss your body path it kind of it doesn't actually move straight up and down it, it kind of moves a bit more forward and like kind of forward and down and then backward and up so uh, yeah just think about that when you're doing the push-up and then like another thing that will help this is that whole forearm thing about keeping your forearms the same if you do that then your body should hopefully kind of align to like how the push-up should be performed Okay, one more thing to talk about with form is your tempo and how fast you're going. What you want to do is you want to try and have a controlled movement. And the reason for this, there's, there's two reasons, right? The first reason is to minimize risk of injury. If you have a very fast uh, pace, 
then I think it's it's a lot more uh, plausible that you can get like an elbow injury or even like a shoulder injury. So you want to do is slow it down so that there's like less of risk of that. Because if because if you get injured, then you can't even train, which is which is just a bit of an L. All right, and then the other thing is you need to slow down to to get more gains, right? Now this now the reason why this is is because you're increasing time under tension, right? So you're slowing. So what you should do is try and slow down the motion so that your muscles actually have to work, like actively work more. Um, and so what you should do is you should. There's there's two parts of a push up. Well, actually, I guess three. So, I mean, you could say there's four. Okay. So there's the, the four points of the push up are the very top of the push up, the going down there of the push up, the bottom of the push up and then the going up of the push up so you could say top position and then when the, the going down bit is called the eccentric and then the bottom position you could call it just like the bottom position or like a the isometric like at the bottom and then the top and then going up is like it's called the concentric right so what you want to do is you want to slow down the eccentric because you're you're push your um you're pushing against a force which is gravity because gravity is acting downwards and so what you're doing is you're slowing down gravity so you're actually using your muscles so you can increase your muscle gain like your like your muscle usage if you like, try and slow yourself down on the way down instead of just like dropping yourself straight to the ground I mean that could also injure your face as well if you like drop too fast and you just smack your face into the ground that would, that would not be uh, good yeah so um yeah you want to slow down the bottom portion and then the other thing is with the concentric you could also have that slow as well but um if you're trying to train for like explosive strength um to be able to like recruit like a bunch of muscle fibers and like release that energy at once then try and have the concentric portion like the pushing away have that as fast as possible so the a good rule of thumb would be like um to at the very top of the position and then slow down on the way down hold for like a second and then push up as fast as you can and then just uh, like pause again and then do the same movement like that all right so it's just like a like a pause at the top slow down pause at the bottom quickly come up all right that's like the tempo they should try and get now another thing with speed and tempo uh, as I said, you don't want to go so fast, and then the other thing is like with the pauses. Now these pauses are actually quite important because like don't don't neglect the pause because w what um people might do to kind of cheat push-ups is try and just like use momentum, and this makes push-ups like a lot easier because if you're going at a really fast pace, then on the way down, kind of gravity like uh lets you like go down and then if you don't even pause then you kind of have like a little bounce which kind of helps you get back up but by by pausing this actually uh, eliminates those factors and then therefore you'll have more muscle activation needed and so therefore you'll get bigger gains so ladies and gentlemen there we have it this brings us to the end of the video and um, yes, this may be a lot to take in, there's a lot of information, so don't feel overwhelmed um, if this is like your first watch through, so probably just like go through a few more times to try and understand truly like each of the different parts and um, just try and like slowly implement each of these little tweaks in every time you try and um, do your push-ups. So yeah, um, hope you've learned something. And, uh, in the, f in the near future, I'll be posting like a few follow-up videos to this one, talking about what you should do to, um, if you're not able to currently do a push-up, how to get to do one, and how to also increase your push-up reps as well, and also um, other like progressions and variations and things like that. So a lot of um, really good content coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. And um, anyway, for now. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.